Guess what, citizens of Gotham? You're watching The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Progressive Comedy Tour, Ron Placona and I going to Florida in January. We've got a bunch of dates coming up in 2019. Get your tickets now. The last several shows have sold out. So get them while they're hot. Go to GrahamElwood.com. And of course, great ways to support the show are following me on social media. All those analytics help. Um, liking, subscribing, make sure you're subscribed. Hit the notification, the bell button. And of course, Patreon is another great way to support the show. This, um, speaking of Patreon, this article was submitted by Patreon supporter at the $5 level, you get to participate in the show and suggest stuff to me, which is great. I learned so much from all of you. I really appreciate it. There's a couple slots left at the $5 select a topic level. Um, this one again by Crafty Geek. Amazon's H2, HQ2 spectacle isn't just shameful, it should be illegal. So I'm sure most of you are aware of this. Amazon has this habit of um, getting cities to give them corporate welfare, tax breaks, money, all this crap. And they said they were, and now they've split it between Washington, D.C. And there's going to have two headquarters, one in New York City and one just outside of Washington, D.C. You know Washington, D.C., where Bezos lives. He bought two mansions and is fusing them together um, like some sort of horrifying billionaire Frankenstein experiment. You know, Jeff Bezos that owns the Washington Post that he got paid $600 million by the CIA who flies around in a $75 million Gulfstream while his employees wear diapers. You know, that guy, just so you, I, I don't know if you're just bringing you up to speed. Um, 14 months ago, Amazon announced a national beauty contest in which North American cities could apply to win the honor of landing the retailer's Second headquarters, the prize 50,000 employees and the glory of housing an international tech giant. The cost, just several billion dollars in tax incentives and potential facelift to the host city. Boop. This article is very in-depth and I suggest reading all of it. Um, it also goes into you know, the specific reasons why this is ridiculous. So, so often these companies don't even... Um, follow through on what they promise and cities lose all this money. I mean, we, I've seen this happen with like sports, like the World Cup is notorious. While I love watching it as a sports tournament, there's so many cities and uh, countries where the World Cup comes in and build, you know, forces these countries to build all these stadiums and spend all of this money that they don't have. And then there's these venues just sitting there unused. Same thing with the Olympics. It's the same thing in, in, in venues in America when like a sports team is like wanting taxpayer money and they always threaten, well, we're going to move if you don't fuck you then. Take your fucking stadium. Why? Tax money? What? No. No. So this is bullshit. These are American companies who are just opening up and they then they have this, you know, slave auction basically to see who's going to get their factory where they don't even have union employees. The rumored announcement has em uh, emboldened Amazon's army of critics. Did the world's smartest company really need 13 months and applications from 238 cities to reach the striking conclusion that it should invest in New York and DC? <laughs> sure there was no corruption there. The former is America's heart of capital and the latter is America's literal capital where Jeff Bezos, chief executive of Amazon, already owns a house and a newspaper. Just one of his houses. Bezos, how about a Bezy Bez? Every year, American cities and states spend up to $90 billion in tax breaks and cash grants to urge companies to move among states. The more the federal government spends on housing, education, and infrastructure, that's, let me say that again, that's more, $90 billion is more than the federal government spends on housing, education, and infrastructure. And let me, in talking to all these MMT guys, let me explain the difference here between cities, states, and the Fed, right? So cities and states are actually dependent upon federal money and tax revenue. 
So cities and states actually have to balance a budget. The federal government creates currency. When, the, when Congress passes a law to pay for something, the federal, the federal Reserve just puts money in accounts and it's done. That's how it's done. That's why the federal government could push a Green New Deal and make it happen today. So this is even worse for municipalities and states because they don't, they, they need this, they actually need, ta the federal government doesn't need tax revenue. Your ta on the federal level, taxes are theft, it's complete theft. So, <laughs> so the fed, the, 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 your local governments need actual tax revenue and federal money to function, to operate. The federal government does not. And since cities and states can't print money and run steep deficits, that's what the federal government can do, um, these deals take scarce resources from everything local governments would otherwise pay for, such as schools, roads, police, and prisons. Yeah, that's who pays for all that stuff, is your local governments. That's why when voter turnout in like mayoral elections and stuff like that are so low compared to presidential, I'm always blown away by that. Because your city council, your school board, your mayors, all, that affects your daily life way more than the federal government does. Way more. So this is, I'm, I'm glad that, that there was an outcry about this. And like Ocasio-Cortez and other people like, wait a minute. And this is good because it, it, it's, there's, there's starting to be like a steamroll a little bit, some energy behind it. And it, I think a lot of it has to be with Bernie Sanders doing the Stop Bezos Act. Again, that was just a clever name of a bill he introduced that hasn't even passed. And he got Disney and Amazon to up their wages. Now, it's not, they're not perfect wins. It's not like he got Amazon to become union and really take care of his employees. But $15 an hour, if you were making $10 an hour, now you're making $15, that's got to help. It's not a cure-all if you don't have health care and all this other stuff. That's another reason why we need Medicare for all. Because then when employees are getting free health care from the government, then they have more leverage with employers. Because if you want to walk out or strike or uh, petition for better wages and working conditions and they threaten to fire you and that's where you're getting your health coverage and you got to stay there because you have a kid with whatever, asthma, a spouse with battling cancer or anything, just a pre-existing condition, you can't walk away from that kind of health care and they know it. So they just, what do they do? Bezos, who's got $158 billion, could peel off one of his billion dollars and make all of his employees' lives better? He doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to squeeze municipalities' tax uh, money on these horrifying beauty contests. Because that's the thing. They always, they always say we're going to come in and we're going to bring 20,000, 50,000 jobs or whatever. And if they were actually doing that, great. But why do you need all these tax breaks? And is all that money you're saving, are you funneling that back down to your employees? No, you're not. Bezos buys another jet. But here's how the corporate media is responding. <laughs> Amazon HQ2 critics are misinterpreting the deal, the New York Deputy Mayor Alicia Glenn said. Oh, come on. It's, a, it's an endorsement of who we are as a city. I guarantee you five years from now, all New Yorkers will be thanking us they brought them. $1.5 in subsidies for Amazon is the smart thing to do. Really, CNBC, boy, they're really fighting a good fight against the billionaire class, aren't they? Really stick, Tyler Clifford's really sticking it to the, uh, the ruling class, isn't he? Nice work, Ty. And way to go, Deputy Mayor Alicia Glenn. Really, really fighting for your people. Yeah, that's great. $1.5 billion in subsidies. I wonder if that money could actually help New Yorkers versus Amazon's Jeff Bezos and his rich buddies. Think about that, Deputy Mayor, just a thought. Just a thought. 
Thanks for watching The Political Vigilante. Like, subscribe, share the videos, watch the ads all the way through at the top. Don't click skip ads. I don't get paid when you click skip ad. You let the ads play. Even if it's from stupid conservative bullshit, just be happy knowing that that dumb conservative channel is actually giving me money every time you let their ad play. <laughs> Little Robin Hood to those jack wagons, right? Thanks for watching.